way most people would do it. All right, so jumped over this quickly, and I forgot to turn the darn thing on, so I'm going to back up and give a five-minute little thing. All right, this is a fast start to jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript library that's available at jQuery.com. When you go to jQuery.com, you can load this in a bunch of different ways. All right, we went out there and took a quick look at it. And that is, you can load the whole thing. You can load it what's called compressed, where it's been what's known as minified, where any unnecessary white space has been removed. You can load it uncompressed, where you can look at it. You, no one ever loads it uncompressed. You should never change this file, ever. You can use this file, but don't ever change it. You make changes in your own file. All right. Plus, in the last couple versions, they have what's called a slim version of it, where they remove some stuff that most people don't use. All right. You can also use what's called a CDN or a content delivery network. Notice here is jQuery from StackPath. Yeah, you gotta look, but I know what's in here. Now they want, now they want to send it to you. Forget that. All right. So in the book here on 229, they rewrite this FAQ presentation and they rewrite it using jQuery. This means when the program loads into memory. So when it loads into memory, this is saying anytime you click an H2 tag, if it was a minus, make it a plus. If it was a plus, make it a minus. As it says, it illustrates the use of the ready event method right here. Also shows a jQuery selector right here. And five different methods. The click method, the ready method, the ATTR method, the next method, the hide method, and the show method. So again, you can include this in many different ways. You can download it onto your computer. You can use a CDN. All right, there's the history of jQuery. Now notice September 2016. Well, it is now November 2018. So if we go out to jQuery.com, the newest version is 341. So you can notice three different releases in the last three years. Usually whenever they, they put something new in there like that, it's to add new features. Somebody has created something that didn't exist previously. Again, you have your choice when you do this that you can either start it with just the dollar sign or use the document ready, which we'll see in a minute. So again, this says choose all paragraphs. This says choose the ID of FAQS. This says choose anything with a class of minus. These are descendants, and I, as I mentioned in class, it's like a descendant. I'm a descendant of my parent. My daughters are descendants of me, etc. Adjacent, that's like brothers or sisters. General siblings, that's anything. This would be any paragraph that's, that's under a UL. All right. This would be a UL, but only the ULs that are under divs. Okay. And again, when you call these methods, we talked about these a little bit. So this would take whatever was in the text box named gallons, grab the value of it, copy it over into the variable gallons. This would set it. So this would clear it out. This would set text in an element. So with this, submit a form, etc. And when you use these events, again, there's two ways you can do these, the long way and the short way. Most people actually choose the long way. It's not much more typing, and it's more self-descriptive 
of what it is you're trying to do. So the author says, in this book, we're going to use the long way. All right. So the next thing they do in here, starting on 238, is they rewrite this email list application using jQuery. All right. So when you look on the screen here, remember this? You really don't have to change any HTML. You really don't have to change any CSS. What's going to change is the jQuery. Now, notice what they're doing here, because this is important. Everybody see these two lines, the one in green and the one in blue? You have to include jQuery before you include your own JavaScript file. If you're going to use jQuery, if you're going to use jQuery in your own file, it has to be loaded after the CDN for jQuery. You have to do that. So here is the jQuery. When you look at this, it's not real different from what we did, except we're using .val instead of .value. But when you look on the screen here, it's not that different. We're not using nodes and, you know, next node, etc. We're using next. We're setting the text. All right. I would say take a look at this one. I would assign this one, but it's literally you can grab it off the Internet. And, you know, so it's just kind of a waste of your time. But you can pretty much expect when you do your test that you will probably be doing the BMI one and rewriting it in jQuery. All right. Next on page 243, I'm going to make this real small just for a second. These are the things that you'd use most often. Don't memorize them. That would be stupid. But again, this might be a thing in the book that you will want to dog ear, you'll fold it over, whatever, you'll probably be able to use this on your next test. You will have two problems on your next test. One will prob probably, at least, I haven't written it, I don't know, one will probably be rewriting the, the BMI. The other one will be something that will be fairly simplistic, but you'll have to do it all in jQuery. You hear that? Okay. So when you look at this stuff, Attributes, setting a value of an attribute. Does something contain something? Is something empty? Does something equal something else? See these? See this even? Do you, do you all know what zebra striping is on a table? Have you ever seen a table where every other row is at like, like maybe like a light gray or something like that? That's zebra striping. One way that you can zebra stripe you can do it totally in CSS, but you can also zebra stripe using jQuery. All jQuery is, is it's using JavaScript methods with CSS. That's all it is. First for the first element, first child for the first child element, GT for greater than, EQ for equal to, LT for less than. Guess what? You're programming. All right? Has, if it has something, is it a header in H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, or H6? Last, last child, odd. A lot of times when people go and they create these the, that zebra striping for tables, they either use the colon even or they use the colon odd. Parents, etc. Again, look at the examples down near the bottom here on page 243. This is how you learn this stuff. Just keep looking at examples. All right. So here's some methods that you can use. Again, <clears throat> this is not meant to be all of them. And again, if I make it small, you can see all of them that they're showing here. Don't think you're going to memorize these. You're not. I don't know them. The, half the, the thing with this is, do I know where to go look for something? All right. 
You can set CSS properties directly. You can set CSS classes directly. Look at this one. You already saw this. You already looked at this one. This said, if it's a minus, make it a plus. If it's a plus, make it a minus. When you do a toggle, it's like doing a remove and then an add. Does that make sense? It's like toggling a light switch. It means if it was off, turn it on. If it was on, turn it off. And keep doing that. That's exactly what they're saying here. You can hide things. You can show things. All right. Now, I think I've told you this already. I'm 99.9% .9 sure I have. But if you really want to start using this stuff and learning how to use it, what is it? UI.jQuery.com. It's not there. Okay. Where is it? If you go out to jQueryUI.com, okay, if you, want, if you say, hey, I want to know how to use, I don't know, a date picker. See that? Notice what happens when I put my mouse here. Is that pretty obvious? But they give you all the code for you doing that. Just click the view source button. There it is. And guess what? That's all the JavaScript code you need. That's it. Like four or five lines. That's it. You're calling built-in jQuery routines. All right. I think I showed you this one the other day, but here is an example of an accordion. Notice when I click on this. See that? But the good news is, again, view source. That's all of it. You call the accordion method. That's it. And there's other things, too. I don't want to keep throwing these at you. But just, just so you see it, this one's kind of cool. This thing that says easing. All right. And it'll show you how you can move stuff around on a screen. See that? All right. So there's so much stuff. Notice there's a bunch of demos over here. All right. Start looking at that stuff because it's going to help you a lot when you take the next test. All right, more event methods. I don't know if I ever told you about this. I thought it was kind of funny. I know people who are, have kind of a weird sense of humor. So what they did, okay, they'll make a button. They'll put, it on a, they'll put a button on a screen. When you see a button on a screen, what do you typically do with a button? You click it, right? So, so they got a button on the screen, so you click it. Nothing happens. So you click it again. Nothing happens. You keep clicking it, nothing happens. Now eventually you double click it. So instead of putting something in the click event, they put it in the double click event. And if the person doesn't know that and they don't double click, they, they don't know how to get it to run. So I've seen that before. All right. So it says the table above pre presents some of the ones that you use most often. There's also key down, key up, etc., mouse down and mouse up. I can set it up so on a form I can use jQuery, so I ask you your H, okay? And you fat finger, and you put a G in there. It just doesn't accept it. It, it is looking for the digits 0 through 9. And if you put anything in other than those digits, it just doesn't take it. All right? That's an example of what you can work with. All right. Other things, as it says, you should be aware of. This is more complex. You're attaching event handlers on and off. If we have time, we probably won't. But if we have time, otherwise, even during the last week, I might just give you, you know, I've written like a simple calculator with using jQuery. And there's tons of them out there. All right. I based it on one that I found out on the Internet. Okay. So the last thing that's in the chapter here, notice first they've got this FAQ thing in jQuery. Well, you see, we already looked at that pretty much. But you are going to have to be able to look at this and have it make sense. 
All right. What this is, that's an, you know, it's one of those accordions that I showed you. Would you agree with that? It pretty much is. Now, we're not calling the accordion class here, but that's another way that we could have done this. All right. This is toggle class. Again, if it's a minus, make it a plus. If it's a plus, make it a minus. All it's doing. This image swap, you may remember this, you may not. All right, look on the screen, please. If you click, these are thumbnails. If you click any one of the thumbnails, the big picture goes in here. All right, so what did they change? They're showing you in yellow here what they have changed from the original HTML when they did it in JavaScript. Well, they made the paragraphs and the captions, they gave them IDs so they can work with them in jQuery. All right? The CSS, the LI, they said to display inline. In other words, what that's doing is that's taking these and having them all on the same line. Does that make sense? All right. And then here's the J, whoop, and that gets on the next page. There's the jQuery. There's still a bit of code. All right. But as it says, when you attach an event handler to a link, you often need to cancel the default action. So again, when we run this, all right, if these are hyperlinked, what do we want to have happen? Well, we want to click here and have that show here, right? We don't want it to go anyplace else. And here's that rollover. Again, what's changed? Well, we're adding a little bit of, to the uh, JavaScript, not really a lot. But what, again, what you are going to have to do is to take a look at this stuff. Now, as we finish up, I want to show you this quickly. Look on the screen, please. All right? Because I'm going to go and bring up each one of these 10 different things that I sent you. So here's the first one. This is called learn.jQuery.com. This is from the jQuery website itself. So if you start going through this, see that? It's an online book. Another place to go look if you have questions or whatever. This is the W3Schools tutorial. These are some of the best resources in the world to learn this stuff. All right. Next, the exercises in the W3 Schools tutorial. They score you in here. So I go through here, I click Next, and it says, you know, document your skills, get a certificate. So what they do, I don't remember where it is, but when you start going through it, they ask you questions. And they keep track of how you're doing. All right? And if you get a certain score, they give you like a, a certificate online that you can print off if you want to. All right. Here's a place called W3 Resource. It's not W3 Schools. W3 Resource. And it's got exercise, those are all exercises that are in there. All right, so you can go through there, notice 50 exercises, and they give you solutions. All right. This is the thing that I use a lot. It's called Tutorials Point. They used to give their tutorials out for free. Now they want 10 bucks per tutorial. Well, I ain't paying that. You probably wouldn't want it either. But the tutorial itself, two hundred, three hundred pages. They give you the first forty-four pages for free. Here's another thing that I found out online. I thought this was good. When I first started learning this, I'm not going to lie to you, this is the first one I looked at. All right.
right? And it is, if this is the one I think it is, yeah. It's a woman named Rebecca Murphy. She writes really good stuff. All right, here's her code. So you can go out into GitHub and get her code for free. And it's just examples after examples. See that? That's everything that we're going to be going over. A lot more depth and breadth of coverage than I could give you. Finally, I found this thing out there. Kind of bring everything together. Because this is the course. It's an online thing, 72 pages. HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, and jQuery. All right? And if you look at what's in here, you go down toward the bottom. The last paragraph or last chapter that's in here, starting on page 56, so it's 13 pages. It's all on jQuery. So if you go over to there, that's all you're going to get is just jQuery up the wazoo. All right, questions?